measure temperature, one way you could do it is you could get a, a large flask with a tall top and you fill up the bottom with some sort of liquid. It could be water, alcohol, whatever. And then you had the water come up into a thin top, right? And then as the temperature changes, you could have it, you can see that it would go up and down, right? When it gets hot outside, the water would move up, and when it gets cold, it would move down. And then you could mark off various positions here, and you could assign any numbers you want to them, and that would be a temperature scale. And you could start at zero at the near the bottom and go up to, you know, 100, you could go up to 10,000. It really doesn't matter. You make up whatever you scale you want, and you can make your units as far apart as you want. And so because different people have done this in different places, we've come up with several different temperature scales. Now, one is called Celsius, and this one, the zero number, starts at the point where pure water freezes. And then it goes up, and then they decided to make the 100 mark where pure water boils. <coughs> Now there's another scale called Fahrenheit, and they made the zero on this scale where very salty water freezes, right? which is much lower, because if you had salt in water, the freezing point goes down. That's why they salt the roads and the snows. So the freezing point at Fahrenheit is where very, very salty water freezes, and then the boiling point is 212, which is kind of random. I guess they didn't think that one through. Then we realized that you could actually have a lowest temperature. There is a bottom, bottom temperature that nothing can go below. And this is the temperature at which all molecular movement stops. All the atoms or molecules stop banging around and they stand still. That's the lowest temperature possible because you can't have any less energy than zero. So we made new scales that have this zero as the, uh, the zero as the lowest temperature, and then they go up from there. And those two scales are called Kelvin and Rankin. So we have these four scales, and since they're all different sizes, and they, they all start at different points, we have to uh, convert between them. So let's go over this. So first, let's list these four there. Fahrenheit. This is the one you're hopefully used to using. Celsius, which most of the world uses. Kelvin. One expects that someday the whole world will use Kelvin. And Rankin, which I'm sure you've never heard of. I'm probably spelling it wrong. And I'll explain the purpose of Rankin in a minute. If basically, if you're an engineer and you're in America and you deal with temperature a lot, uh, you may need to be, and use the Rankin scale. <coughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, I want to make a little chart to give you an idea of how these ones relate to each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to do like a table. I love making these little tables. I'm going to be really happy. It's going to be Fahrenheit. <laughs> Celsius. give you some common temperatures and we're going to see what they look like in each one. So let's start out with uh, what will be the temperature on a nice day. So I could go with 70 degrees, that's what we usually do because we like round numbers. But I'm going to use 68 degrees, which is still fairly nice weather. I'm using 68 because it converts well to the other units. So let's say it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit. In Celsius, this would be 20 degrees. So if you're ever traveling and you're in a country and you want to know what nice weather would be in Celsius, it's usually somewhere around 20, say 15 to 25, right in that range. Kelvin, this temperature would be 293. And then Rankin would be 528. So this is what the temperature would show if you had a thermometer with each of these scales if it was a nice day out. Now the freezing point of pure water in, in Celsius is zero. What is it in Fahrenheit? 32, right? And you should have a little degrees signs. We don't put degrees for Kelvin. I don't know who made up that stupid rule, but that's what we do. 273 for Kelvin. 
and 492 for Rankin. So this would be a freezing day. And then absolute zero, the temperature at which all molecular movement stops, the lowest possible temperature, is zero on the Kelvin scale, and zero on the Rankin scale. That's why those scales exist. And then it's going to be positive 273 Celsius, and positive Fahrenheit. I'm sorry, minus 273 Celsius, excuse me. And minus 460 <coughs> degrees Fahrenheit. So this gives you kind of a rough idea of what you might expect from each of these four temperature scales. All right, now let's go over how to convert from one to the next. So I'm going to give you Fahrenheit to Celsius, Celsius to Fahrenheit, and then we'll do Celsius to Kelvin, which is really simple. We're not actually going to deal with Rankin today, just would like you to know that it exists. There are other temperature scales out there too. Okay, so for Celsius to Fahrenheit, temperature in Fahrenheit, and that's obviously what you're solving for, because that's what you're trying to get to, equals uh, 1.8 times temperature in Celsius. By the way, 1.8 is also the fraction 9 fifths, so you may have seen it written that way. So 1.8 times temperature in Celsius, and then you add 32 at the end. And you can look at any of those up there and you can see that that's what happens. If you take 20, multiply by 1.8, add 32, you get 16. So. All right, let's do the reverse. Let's do Fahrenheit. Celsius. And so this one, really, if you understand what we're doing here, if you solve this equation for Tc, you're going to get the conversion to Celsius, right? That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to give you what this equation would look like if I solve for Tc. And so Tc equals, so it's going to be temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32. Because <coughs> the first thing you would do here is subtract 32 from both sides, right? I'll put that in parentheses. And then once you get that answer, it's divided by 1.8. Again, if you've seen this before, multiplying by 5 ninths is exactly the same as dividing by 1. Uh, I just like this better. So those are your two conversions uh, for Fahrenheit to Celsius, Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now let's do the Kelvin to Celsius, and this one's really easy. And here's why it's really easy. I told you, for example, that uh, each of these scales started a different zero. Well, except for Kelvin and Rankin, they have the same zero, but these ones start at different zeros, right? And so Kelvin and, uh, and Celsius started a different zero, but they have the same size units. So whenever the temperature goes up by one in Celsius, it goes up by one in Kelvin. In other words, the markings on the thermometer would be the same size. And if it goes up by five degrees Kelvin, it also goes up by five degrees Celsius. There's no multiplication involved. All we have to do is add a number. So it's really simple. So we'll do Celsius to Kelvin. For this one, it's just going to be temperature in Kelvin equal to temperature in Celsius plus 273. That's it. So whatever it is in Celsius, you just have to add 273. And then the reverse conversion, of course, is going to be really easy. To find Celsius from Kelvin, you're just going to subtract 273. So this is going to be Kelvin to Celsius going to be Tc equals temperature in Kelvin minus 273. Remember, these are just little substrates, right? They don't, you know, they just tell you which temperature we're talking about. All right, so let's do a few problems with these and see how they work. Let's start out with, uh, uh, let's do Celsius to Fahrenheit. So, example one, convert. Uh, 
I don't know. What do you want the temperature to be? 21. <laughs> huh? 21. 25? <laughs> no, 21. 21. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 21 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation here, and we're going to plug 21 in for TC, for temperature in Celsius. So we're going to do Tf equals 1.8 times, and instead of me writing Tc, I'll just write in whatever the temperature is, 21, plus <laughs> 32. What is so funny over there? What? What a vine is. Wow. He's 100 years old. He doesn't know what a vine is. I don't know. People don't know what vines are. What is it? Tell me. The, the guy, he's like, well, what's 9 plus 10? And the little boy. No, he goes, you stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, and the shade's like an actual head. I know. So the kid says 9 plus 10 is 21. Yeah, he says 21. All right. 1.8 times 21 is what? 37.8. 37.8 plus 32. What's this come out to? 69.8. 69.8. Which makes sense, right? Because every time the temperature in Celsius goes up by one, the temperature in Fahrenheit goes up by 1.8. So, so, uh, so 20 was 68, 21 is 68. Uh, let's do another one with Celsius. Let's do 40 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. So 40 would actually be a pretty hot day if it was 40 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, this would be like in the summertime at the hottest part of the day. So let's do uh, T Fahrenheit equals 1.8 times 40 degrees plus 32. Right out here your voice. Okay, so 1.8 times 40, you should be able to do that in your head, right? It's like, no, you can't. It's like 18 times 4. 72. All right, and 32, so what's that come out to? 104. So 40 Celsius is 104 Fahrenheit. That'd be really hot. All right, um, and so you could gauge from this that your body temperature is probably a little bit less than 40 Fahrenheit, right? Or 40 Celsius, excuse me. It's like 37 or something. All right, let's do um, Fahrenheit to Celsius. So pick a temperature. What do you want to pick? 21. 21. <laughs> 21 degrees Fahrenheit. That's my favorite number. That's really hot. Yeah. All right, so what we're going to do is temperature in Celsius equals, so we're going to plug in 21 here this time. So 21 minus 32 divided by 1.8. So what we end up with is negative 11 over 1.8. What's that come out to? Negative 6.4. 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 Negative
21 minus 273, which is what? Yeah, two. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I forgot the two. I know what you meant. Negative 252. Yeah. The rest of you are just jealous that you need to use Minus 252 Celsius. All right, questions on any of this? All right, we are done. Sky. Well, we don't. Okay, turn off the recording. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that lesson's going to be up there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to record it again. It's not easy. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's 20.